about five years ago, I retired from the army, and um, you know, I was excited. I was, I was, I was excited to start a new journey and try new things. I mean, when you, when your life has been centered around the military for twenty years, you kind of don't know what's what's going on outside of that realm. And so I decided that uh, I'd move here to Georgia. And I actually volunteered at a farm for about eight or nine months. Did that fairly full time. Um, I bought an RV and I moved on to the farm. And I mean, you know, there were 16 hour work days. Um, I enjoyed it. And and yeah, so I did that for a while. And then, you know, after about, like I said, eight or nine months, I decided, well, let's Let's uh let's try to make Georgia a permanent home. So I uh, I wanted to buy a house. In order to do so, um, I wanted to get a job so that you know the the bank could see some extra income coming in, and I did that. I worked at Tractor Supply for a few years, and um, then I so. I say at Tractor Supply, you know, started noticing things. Um, started noticing that, um, one, I was drinking too much, and I had to, I had to slow down on that. So I ended up basically just quitting cold turkey um, in 2020. And then when that happened, my my production at work improved quite a bit and I was promoted rather swiftly. Um, within the first year I had been promoted two or three times. Uh, I had become assistant store manager and life was good. As assistant store manager, I ended up purchasing the property that I live on right here that I have my homestead on. And I mean, life couldn't be better, but I was also noticing that I was angry quite often and I was having issues with some coworkers and I mean, not like horrible, but you know, my, I was having, I was having issues regulating my, my happiness, my joy. Um, I'd leave work and if I was off work, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do anything. I would be so drained, um, not, not so much physically, but mentally that on my off days, I would lay on the couch all day and, you know, just in this look, you know. So, you know, I had talked to a friend and uh, they had mentioned that they were talking to someone at the VA. So I decided, hey, let me go talk to somebody. So I did that and, and uh, that was kind of the ticket to bring me to where I'm at today. So... I spoke to a therapist and the therapist was great. We uh we made a lot of uh progress and and I just felt like okay, we're making progress, but there's still something that's holding me back. So I decided to quit track supply. Not anything on track supply side, you know, that was an issue. Um, it's just that I was having an issue dealing with, dealing with, you know, customers and, and, and coworkers. And it was just, it was just becoming a bit much. So I decided to step away from that. Let's go on another job that was more agriculture related and, you know, out and about. And uh, that lasted for about eight months, and whatnot. So that brings us up to 2024 where I decided that in order for me to take care of myself, I needed to quit looking for jobs, scale back what, you know, my, any kind of spending or anything so that I could just live off of my retirement and homestead full time. Well, that was the next key right there. Um, great move that I made was, was to do that and not, not pressure myself to, 
to kind of fit in with society and be a part of society. Now, I do enjoy being a part of the community. Um, but when I'm, when I'm being a part of the community, it's more like being around like-minded people though. So other homesteaders, other people who live off the land and, you know, even though their, their way may be different than my way, we still have kind of a common, a common bond there. So. I've been doing that since February, March. I want to say the end of April. Um, so it's September now. So April, May, June, July, August. So four and a half months, let's say. And life's great. It's great. I love it. I get to spend all day with my with my chickens, my turkeys. I got turkeys back over there, my rabbits over here, and I got meat birds over here. And I've had more time to do projects, my compost, and I got three gardens around the property, a greenhouse, and uh, I absolutely enjoy this more than I really knew that I would enjoy it. So that brings me to monetizing my homestead. So I guess the next step in the process would be to, hey, start monetizing, start raising meat birds and selling selling chickens and, you know, meat rabbits, selling rabbits, you know, selling veg and whatnot. And, um, that just seems like that's just the next step. But actually, the more I look into that, the more I want no parts of it. Um, I did contact... Um, Georgia Department of Agriculture about my my gardens to see if I could just sell that um, produce and whatnot um, with a roadside stand. And they said, absolutely, you can do that. The issue comes in when you want to do meat birds and whatnot. Here recently in Georgia, um, they had some law changes that really, really, really hurt the homesteader. Um, especially if you want to do, uh, any type of meat production, specifically poultry, which would be my number one thing. I mean, cause that's what I would, um, like to do would be to, to sell, um, chicken, but they've made it nearly impossible if you want to, I haven't got it all down, but it seems like if you want to, uh, produce and sell or raise and sell more than a thousand meat birds a year or add a thousand meat birds a year, you have to set up. Sorry, my phone cut off right there, but what I was saying though is you, you have to pretty much create a processing center on your own property. Uh, they make you jump through a lot of hoops with it. I mean, you got to have a whole separate building, a certain square footage requirement to it. And then it's got to have bathrooms in it for, you know, male and female bathrooms. And it's got to have uh, its own septic. It's, you know, it's a, it's a big to do, really. And or you have the other option of taking your birds to a processor, which there's only. I know, I know of one USDA processor here in Georgia. It's up near Atlanta. And um, I mean, that's about an hour, hour and a half depending on traffic. Uh, drive, but anyway, you know, they just make you jump through a lot of hoops on it. Um, I've just been looking into poultry, so I haven't looked into my rabbits. Um, but it also goes for my turkeys as well. Um, so would I monetize this homestead? And to me, I gotta say, majority, like mostly, my answer on that is no, I will not. Uh, do a big operation here on the homestead. It's just not, not feasible here in Georgia. You can get grants and, and all kinds of loans and stuff. But I mean, you know, most of us homesteaders, grants are good, you know, but I mean, we don't, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be giving our money to the, to the, to the big bank corporations out there. Uh, we'd rather keep our money here in our community. Um, anyway. So they said that I could do a roadside stand. 
And I think that's what I will do is a roadside stand. I can sell only vegetables that I grow here and um, and fruit that I grow here. And I don't need a cottage license for that as long as I don't alter any of the anything that I process. So like I can't I can't sell chopped up carrots. I can sell whole carrots, but I can't chop them up. You know, I can sell collards, but I can't chop them up, put them in a bag. You know, I got to, it has to be the whole, the way it came off the plant um, is, is what they explained to me. So I don't think that's too difficult. Um, and so I will be doing that in 2025. This, this, this fall and winter, I'll be building a, a stand to go out there. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But as far as monetizing on a large scale, I do not recommend that to anyone here in Georgia, unless you're rich or you don't have to be rich, but unless you, you got the money to do it. Um, or if you want to go in debt to do it, you know, I don't recommend that, but, um, it's going to cost a pretty penny to do a large operation on your homestead. So, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy links below to all the resources that I use to come to this determination. Um, and if you're, you know, if you live here in Georgia, by all means, read those, read those links and uh, make an informed decision yourself. But anyway, hey, I ain't gonna keep you here too long. Um, just wanted to sit down and have a conversation with you. I never get to do that. And I felt like this afternoon was the perfect time for it. And, uh, you know, let you hang out with my chickens here. If you're still here with me, um, I really appreciate it. Um, I feel that if you didn't want to hear about my my <laughs> my homestead and my why I became a homesteader and and all that, you probably would have been gone at forty about forty five seconds. I'll see I'll see what the stats say because <laughs> I've never done a video like this before, but. Anyway, if you're still here, I appreciate you being here. Um, and I hope that I shed the light a little bit on, you know, homesteading here in Georgia and what kind of some of the pros and cons are. Um, mostly, you know, when it comes to large scale production, there's, there's mostly a bunch of cons. I mean, the pros, you know, are you, you can still provide your community with nutrient dense food. That isn't tainted by the, by what all the stuff that they put in, you know, into our food nowadays. But a major con is that here in Georgia, at least, they've made it nearly impossible for someone who's not, um, you know, who doesn't have a lot of money to be able to do it here, at least on a larger scale. Um, I think you can get away with processing smaller amounts and whatnot, but I won't even get into the red tape on it. I'm just going to process for personal use here on the farm and I'm going to sell, um, I'm going to sell vegetables at the farm stand. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. I appreciate you being here with me. Um, I'll link everything below here that I found and I will link, um, I always make my, my affiliates in my, my Amazon stuff down below, but I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed watching the birds a little bit. If you didn't like hearing me ramble on and I'll see you in the next video.